Hello everyone, welcome to CIO Leadership Live. I'm Kirat Attar and I will be your host for this episode. Our guest today is Mahesh Jutiavar, Global CIO of Mastic. Mahesh, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you with us and thank you for joining CIO Leadership Live. Thanks for having in this meeting, uh, Kirat. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm very excited to have this conversation with you and I hope we're going to be able to cover a lot of topics about your role and about your organization as we get into it. Uh, just to start with Mahesh, can you tell us a little bit about Mastec and your role and responsibility as the CIO of the organization? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mastec is a 40 plus year old company. Uh, we, are, we are operating out of 40 plus countries. We are into digital transformation or transformation for our customers. We are focused on UK, US, Middle East uh, uh, as a region. So we are into uh, public sector, healthcare, uh, healthcare, manufacturing are the key domains where we are delivering. Along with that, the package implementation, we are also a platinum partner in implementing the Oracle solutions across the globe. So. Uh, I represent as a, I, I take care of a global CIO role. I'm responsible for IT infrastructure, internal applications, which includes package applications, tools, technologies, plus a bespoke application and cybersecurity. Along with that, we have a concept called as internal innovation and external offering. So CIO role is not restricted to the internal, it's also uh, in Mastec, it is also focused on revenue generation. Also, I take care of one uh, key domain uh, where I own the P&L for Mastec. Great. Thank you so much for covering everything that you do at Mastec and everything that Mastec is responsible for uh, across the globe and in your key domains. Uh, so since you are helming technology in Mastec, you probably have a better idea uh, also about what technology is going around more than anyone else. And as we've crossed the first quarter of 2024, uh, there are some tech trends that we're carrying in from 2023 onwards, which are creating waves across the market. So are there any significant technological trends that you see emerging as game changers uh, that you would place your bets on, that you would want to incorporate in the technology offerings that you have? And how is Mastec uh, leveraging these technologies to enhance research, development, and other key areas in your business? So uh, technology is an ever evolving platform and you need to be sure. in line with the latest technologies which is coming up, right? So when the COVID happened, a lot of technologies which came in, the way of working has been changed. So the security, the applications, the, uh, the way of working has been completely changed. So similarly, if you look at it post COVID, now the area is on Gen AI. So all, uh, application platform, cybersecurity, all technologies are aligned towards uh, Gen AI as a feature. So Gen AI is, there are two aspects. One is the security risk which is coming up. Second is how do we ensure that our resources are also not left behind with this uh, new wave which is coming in, right? So if you don't expose them to any kind of Gen AI as a technology, they will be losing out or they will be a misfit in the future uh, world. So it's a balancing between ensuring that our 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 uh, uh, internal information, customer information is protected, and also embed with, uh, enable every user to use the Gen AI as a technology towards that. So we did, uh, this, is, this is one of the initiative which is being driven through a, uh, our CEO and every week we have a 30 minutes spent the CXOs only on the Gen AI as a topic. So Gen AI is not that I'm going to wait for six months, eight months and all. It has become a weekly progress activity now. So that's where we are tracking. There are two tracks which is happening. One is the internal usage of the Gen AI, which is I had the, that part. And second is what is that we are all going to offer to our customer using a Gen AI as a feature. So we have built our own Gen AI uh, internal app called as AI Amigo, which is going to be enabling all the Gen AI feature. And not only it will enable the Gen AI feature for our own organization, but also it protects us from a uh, lot of vulnerabilities which comes in through the open AI, which is not being protected. So 
clear focus within mass tech is Gen AI. Along with that, there are transformation journeys, which is also a part of our uh, engagement, which is which is in parallel. Thank you so much for that. Uh, the tool sounds uh, really great. I especially like the name uh, AI Omega because that's kind of like having a a friendly AI interface to help you with the things that maybe are not uh, in human control. Or, you know, just to take things to the next level, which is pretty great. Um, so, so you know, since as a global CIO, you play a very significant role in driving digital innovation. Also, like you just mentioned, that you are responsible for shaping the way things are working internally at Mastex. So that's something that you oversee. Uh, but also, you get to see the industry and the domain and the way technology is altering on that front. So, could you share your perspective on what the future of IT looks like in the digital services industry? Um, in terms of you working internally and your client services as well, and how Mastic is preparing to adapt to some of the upcoming both trends and challenges. So, IT industry is ever ever changing, right? So, the one of the one of the technology which has stayed for a longer period of time is the mainframes. So, it's ever been changed with AI coming in, Gen AI coming in, or the transformation application cloud coming in. So all technologies, when it got evolved, there were risks which is coming in. So similarly, if you look at today, the generation has been changed, right? There is a skill gap. Yeah. So there are people who are like very good coder, but they they lose communication, right? Written communication and all. There are sure. people who are having great communication, but less technology coding aspect, right? Mm -hmm. So these gaps are being filled by the technologies today. So today... I'm seeing people are, the communication has been drastically improved by using the Gen AI as a technology, right? The tones which we use, the communications has been, has been improved. So the gap, skill gaps, which was, which was, which was an issue in the previous, uh, previous era, which has been taken over now, it's been fixed. So the skill gap, maybe you, maybe a great uh, a communicator, lack in coding, so uh, coding skill set, auto coding and validating the code and all, not only just validating your code, right? It also take care of like you had a longer cycle of code generation, plus it is undergoing testing, security component yeah. and all. So everything is getting merged into a simple way. So earlier it was a waterfall model where the application used to be get delivered probably around six month, eight month, one year, three year and all. That has re reduced to months in the agile methodology which we adopted in the last era. And today's area is it has come down to days now. So we are deploying a lot of other Gen AI features within the organization as part of the deliverable on a weekly basis. So today we have deliverables on every weekly basis. So the faster the technology delivery is being expected and that's how the technology is moving towards that uh, the faster delivery, it is not only about faster delivery, also driven through more secured, more quality check, more driven through uh, non-human things, but it is becoming a trend and that's where within the organization also there are multiple tools. For, for example, when we take off, uh, our majority of our business is on, on, the, on the services front, right, application delivery. So if you look yeah. at it, application delivery has a life cycle of uh, requirement gathering, uh, the design, the de de development, testing, test cases. So you have to embed the technology into each of these processes so that we can we we can be in line with the industry where it is moving. Right? Yeah. If I say if I go back to the customer today and say that you have a requirement for a application i'm going to be delivering it in one and a half two years nobody is going to accept yeah that has reduced to months in the earlier now it has come down to a weeks now so there are instances when we are doing when we are implementing uh, solutions for our uh, healthcare customer in uk so when the covid happened they did not have a time for a month right so yeah we delivered it in a week's time so if you have to be in line with the industry, the way it is moving, the mm -hmm. quicker, faster, uh, and all, the new tools, new emerging tools, which is coming in, which is going to 
uh, embed with human, right? It is a combination of human and technology which is happening, and that that could be the, uh, the future for any of the industry, which is uh, especially the software industry. The that was a very uh, you know you really highlighted the issues that are at play here. That is simply no one has the kind of time to wait for a service and then integrate it slowly and then see the results because everything is very quick. And if the trend goes out faster than you can even implement it, then it may not be of use to a client or an organization. Uh, I caught on some of, uh, something that you said about, you know, there is a skill gap because there are these technologies which can help you fill those gaps, but there is definitely a gap where somebody who's good at technology might not be very good at communicating and vice versa. And my next question is a little bit related to that because given the speed at which technology is evolving, are there any skill sets or traits that you've begun to value from a technical skills standpoint and also a personal behavior standpoint? Or uh, does that stand out for you when you're picking talent to work for you at Mastic? Um, and I'd also like to follow that up by asking that, you know, how do you think the advent of emerging technologies like generative AI, which companies have really come to depend on, do you think it will alter the preference for talent and the way the job market functions? So uh, one of the challenges which Mastec and other companies also have within our department is traditionally people are delivering you the solutions using the traditional methods, right? Completely changing those traditional methods and adopting a new way of working, right? Moving into a uh, cloud-based application, SaaS-based application, embedding the Gen AI features into that. It is a cultural change, a shift change. Because one is perception is people don't want to change it because they don't understand how the future is going to be. So there is a skill gap in the traditional development life cycle where a lot of skills are still uh, rely upon delivering the solutions using the traditional methods. And that gap is always going to be there. So it is important for us as a CIO is that look at those talents, upgrade them quickly, otherwise they will become misfit. So from a skill perspective, we still have a lot of people on a traditional development, traditional way of performing active, not only on the application development, but also on the cybersecurity, right? Today, if I go back and say that SOC is going to identify, somebody is going to pick up a call and somebody is going to address the call, you're, those days are gone now, right? So, yes. So you have to have the integrated system, which is not only going to detect, protect, and also you don't have a time to wait because yeah. humans are going to be operating on some specific timelines. So those are all the traditional skill sets which we have within organization, within industry, has to be upgraded to the new way of working. And that is going to be critical and that's where we are seeing a challenge in making this cultural shift with the, organ with the, with the employees internally and also when we are hiring some resources externally. So that is to be, uh, that is a priority for us as a CIO function to ensure that all these resources are become, will, will continue to be a fit for the purpose uh, in future. Understood. Uh, so my final question to you would be a little bit about, uh, you know, your leadership and your tenure. Uh, so may I ask you, how many years have you been uh, with Mastic and uh, technology leader in general? So I've been with Mastec for uh, 24 years now. I completed 24 years. This is the 25th year. So uh, I traditionally uh, started with application development, moved into training in 2004 when the career took its uh, turn with joining an information security team, became a cybersecurity or a CISO in 2017, 2007, and then the global CISO 2000, uh, uh, around 2012-13, which includes UK, US, where we were operating majorly. Uh, then 2015 is the year when we I took over as a IT infrastructure and cybersecurity head. And in 2022, I became a global CIO for Mastec. So this is the brief it's history a big journey. Me. And then it's a big journey. And whenever I think about why Mastec, because People ask me why you are staying with Master for 24 years. That's great. Yeah. So whenever I think about looking out for a new role outside Master, there is a new challenge waiting for me. So when I was thought about 
what is next there is a CISO role which was waiting what is next there's IT in front and then CIO role application transformation and then also when I was looking at CIO what is next there is also a PNL role waiting for me mm -hmm. so as an organization I've always seen that there's a new challenge and I love that so when the new challenge is available when you are growing professionally personally you are enjoying your work that's the most True. important one that's where I'm with master from the last 24 years so you would say that the promise of new challenges, always having something new to tackle is what keeps you uh, with Mastic. Absolutely right. Uh, so, so given your passion for your job and your passion for problem solving uh, and your very long tenure uh, as, you know, involved with technology in pretty much every, you know, aspect from beginning to now. If you had to share your leadership principles uh, with your fellow CIOs or just peers in the industry and across the tech domain, what would be three maybe pieces of advice that you would want to impart to somebody uh, who's both at your level or someone who maybe wants to have a career like this? So one of the things which I, I truly believe is that you, we need to have a close collaboration with, if you take a IT uh, as an industry, we need to have a close collaboration with the business and the internal. So True. we have seen the industry that CIOs are truly becoming an internal face, right? They are not becoming the external phase. So CIOs will wear a hat of creating some new domains which could add a revenue to the organization. If you take an example, traditionally we are an application house. So but as we are growing IT infrastructure, cyber security and other domains are also evolving within uh, evolving as one of the revenue stream for us. So how do we bridge that gap? Either you can do it through an inorganic way or whatever internally you are innovating, start offering as an external and be a revenue generation. So it is a close and, and also it brings in my resources when they work on customer accounts, they learn multifolded. So they have restricted access, restricted visibility over there when they work on customer account and come back, they come back with a double experience. So first advice is to have a close collaboration with the business. You need yes. to allow your resources to participate in the business activities. activities. Again, the learning cycle is going to be very quick, faster, quicker and faster. That's the first advice. Second is you have to take a risk. So if you take a risk, you have a 50% of chance that you will win. If you don't take a risk, you have 100% chance, chance of not winning. You will lose it, right? Yes. So you have to take a risk. It could be a, it should be a calculative risk, and you should stick to that problem. So stick to fix to solving the problems. Normally, what we do is we think that the problem is not solvable. We leave it at that point of time. But we should look at solving the problem, and we should be ensuring that we should take a risk to move ahead with that. When the Gen AI came in, cloud came in, a lot of CIOs waited whether we, we we move into a cloud because of the risk at all. The one who have early adopter were the early successor. Same with the Gen AI, yeah. say tomorrow something else will came in. So you have to take a risk, but it should be a calculative risk to take on that. The third aspect which we are saying is we have to be adoptive. Adaptive to the new technology which is coming in, we should ensure that we are aware of new technologies which is happening uh, in the industry. Because there is a disruptions always going to happen, right? When the cloud came in, everybody said that initial days cloud was a disruption, right? Yes. So when the automation came in, everybody said that people are going to lose a job. But yeah. today, if you look at it, the jobs are being more created. Today also people say that Gen AI will take out a lot of jobs. My jobs, yeah. So it's a realignment which is going to happen. Jobs are not going to go out. The the way we were delivering, we will be delivering quickly, but we will be doing more business. In a in a one da value of the investment from our customer is going to be early ROI now, but there is no job which is going to be going up with the disruption of technology which is coming in. So we have to be ensuring that we are aligned to the disruption technologies which is coming in, be early adopter, take a calculative risk and move ahead with that. So if you talk about three risks, one is be aligned with the business. Aligned with business, yeah. Second is to take a risk. And third is uh, look at disruptive technologies, adopt early, become an early adopter. Early adopter. And take a safe risk 
in uh, while adopting uh, while becoming an early adopter thank you so much sir i don't think there is a better note uh, for us to conclude the interview on uh, apart from you know these advice that i'm sure that anyone everyone who's watching uh, will definitely keep bear in mind because i think that is the way you move forward with technology new technology that is the way you don't get phased by all the changes that are happening and given that we've got changes happening at the speed of maybe 3 in every 3 4 months completely new upheaval completely new technologies that's the right attitude to have uh mayesh thank you so much for sitting down with me um and for your candid responses to the questions and for being so transparent about your journey and also the way uh, technology is being leveraged in vastech and also your you know hopes for industry in the future this has been a great conversation thank you kira thank you so thank much you. thank you i'd like to uh, thank our viewers for joining us uh, this is kira uh, signing off until the next episode of cio leadership life